Anybody wants to know what brim looked like on a sander? Bottom left, normal sonar. Bottom right, clear view or dance scan. And the top is a side scan. All those shadows on highlights are brim. Quarter past seven <laughs> in the morning, we've got a whole bag of brim. Oh, yeah, fish home, baby. Well, good day, folks, and welcome back to another fish on video. In this video, firstly, I'd like to say thank you very much to all the subscribers, all the new subscribers, and to the original subscribers that have uh, stuck with me on these videos and supported me and comment and liked on the videos. It's been amazing. I never thought I would reach a thousand, uh, but we have and now we can kick on from here um, i'm not sure whether i'm going to do the monetization which brings in adverts and things like that let me know on your thoughts on that i personally have stopped following a few youtubers because they put too many adverts on and it drives me nuts uh, if you've got a 10 minute video and you've got four or five lots of adverts in i'm just not going to watch it so i don't want to do that i'd rather not get any money from it and keep subscribers happy by not putting any adverts on there so let me know what you think of that. Um, in this video, we hit up Lake Tires yesterday and we had a ripper day. Pistol Peter and myself, we managed to ram 50 brim, which was amazing, uh, all on soft plastics. So from the previous video, I had a few comments regarding techniques, tactics, how I go about catching brim at this time of year, which is spring, we're into October, just gone into October. We had a fairly warm start to spring, so the water temperature's gone up. Uh, Lake Tires at the moment is almost ready to open. It's quite full, which is good. Um, so how I'm gonna target it, and this is gonna be more open areas, so I'm not targeting snags or structure, where you need to beef up your gear. I'm targeting fairly open areas with weed beds, drop-offs, and um, flats, so you know, under two meters of flats uh, where there's a lot of brim sitting. So I'm gonna go through some techniques of what worked yesterday and the, I'll show you the gear that I've used. So please carry on watching this video. There's some hint, uh, tips and tricks in here and all the equipment that I use and then we'll get on the water. I put some footage from yesterday up and go through a few little bits and pieces with working the grubs and working the soft plastics and things like that. So stick around, hit the like and subscribe and Let's get stuck into what we are doing. So that's the rod that did a lot of the damage for me yesterday. It's a Miller Rods Grub Freak, Australian owned company. Um, brilliant rods, they're, they're expensive, $545, but I've used these probably three trips now and they've improved my fishing and the quality of fishing. Just fight, fighting fish on these rods is so much fun. And just the sensitivity, um, to stay in touch with the really light soft plastics is amazing as well. Um, this is seven foot three. I'm not gonna go into all the specs. So it's a Miller Rods Grub three Freak, seven foot three, uh, specifically designed for light soft plastic fishing, targeting brim. So with that, I've got a two and a half thousand size Shimano Stratic. So mostly I just use two and a half thousand sized. This one's a fairly light reel, so it's well balanced with this rod. And on there, I'm running a six pan Sunline Cyclon PEX8 braid, and it's ultra thin. So, I'm not sure whether you can get up a bit closer. That's the braid, it's really thin. Um, cast a mile, I love thin braid. You can really flick a long cast, so when you're targeting shallow areas, winter, crystal clear water, it's not gonna Spook the fish as you're motoring up, even on the Minn Kota, still makes a noise. So the further you can be away from schooling fish or areas you want to target, for me, the better it is. That casts a mile. I haven't had any problems with wind knots or knot strength, so I highly recommend that line. Quality product. That's teamed up. I used a GT knot. Now Sam Flats Fishing on YouTube shows you how to tie that GT knot, so Look over to his channel and have a look. And that's teamed up with a Sunline FC Ruck Leader, which is a three pan leader. So for open water brim fishing, I'm generally using three pan leader. I find that's got 
enough backbone, uh, but he's virtually invisible underwater. All my leaders are fluorocarbon, so you know it's, it's all about that finesse presentation. I love um, finesse. I'm never really bullying fish. Uh, you won't see me just cranking in fish. I'm always playing fish on the drag and trying to finesse the fish the best I can. On the end, the bit that does the damage. So that's a 120th. So that's the weight, 120th of a gram. TT Jigget tournament with a size two hook. So very finesse, very small. Uh, that's the light gauge one as well. And on there is a Z-Man two and a half inch grub in motor oil, which is my favorite color. And at the moment, I'd say it's a f my favorite soft plastic for targeting brute. They just, they just work. They've worked for years and they continue to work. Uh, these plastics, plastics float um, and teamed up with that lightly weighted jig head, you've got that really light flutter. So in this video, we're fishing a little bay area, but it's not just all the same throughout the bay. The top end of the bay, you've got a nice weed bed and then that drops off from about a metre down to two metres where it's fairly sandy. So it's just sand with a little bit of weed, a little bit of fringe weed through the bottom. So that's the kind of area where we're targeting, uh, specifically if the wind's blowing on it. In this morning it was very still, but a couple of trips before the wind was blowing onto an edge and we were fishing a weedy edge where the wind's being blown on. So you imagine all the food and all the bait fish are active chasing all that food and the water and the mud on the bottom is being churned up and the fish are really actively patrolling along there chasing bait fish and anything else that gets washed up so target windy windy banks weedy drop offs and points so and at the end of the video you'll see we're targeting a point and that's coming from the main arm so you've got a little bit of flow coming around the point towards us so we're pretty much landing on the edge of that current and the brim we found we're just sitting on the edge of the current because it's easier to swim and then I'll be darting in, picking off some food and then coming back and hiding around a weedy edge and cover. So that's the first rig and that's the one you'll see at the start of the video but using I'm actually using a Munro's um, two and a half inch grub at the start. Uh, because Pete was using the Z-Man, so I thought I'd change it up and I caught fish. Later on in the day, um, in the middle section of the video, you'll also see me using the same rod, <clears throat> just with a Nasky reel, so two and a half thousand reel, and a four pound leader. So about halfway through the video, you'll see me using a Z-Man Slim Swim, and I caught a few fish on a 1 16th jig head. So slightly heavier, hitting the deck a little bit more, you know, puffing up a bit of the mud and just a different profile. Paddle tail, two and a half inch slim swim. Later on, we were bumping a lot of fish. So around midday, uh, we caught a lot of fish before sunrise. And around midday, we weren't seeing any many bites. The wind was had picked up. It was really tricky to see your line and to register a bite. What we found is I was fishing the 120th Jigger, the rig that I just showed you, I was hitting a lot of fish on the on the hop and wasn't setting the hook so they were bumping. So we were losing a lot of fish. We switched to, which I've never really done before, and uh, Pistol put one of these on first. We were using a hidden weight, sorry, get my fingers out of the way, a hidden weight jig head. So these are normally predominantly for throwing at pontoons, boat holes structure bridges things like that so the weight is hidden so it's a 120th weight that's hidden inside the body of the plastic now the difference in these is it is it presents the soft plastic so instead of falling with the weight at the top of the jig head like that these are going to be falling more of a horizontal fall probably like that and then sitting on the bottom flat fairly flat with the tail wafting up a little bit what we were finding is when we weren't seeing the bites and then we were hopping, this was getting a lot better hookup rate, maybe because of where the soft plastic was sitting and we were able to strike into the fish and keep the fish on. So just a subtle change that you think is not really designed for this purpose, fish in open water, uh, really worked and really upped the catch rate. 
I've probably got another 20 fish on these uh, through the midday and towards uh, late later afternoon. So always got to be changing, always got to be thinking of new things. I probably wouldn't have put one of these on if Pete wasn't there. So, but seeing him catch a lot of fish and myself hooking fish but bumping them, I changed it and instant success. So that was really good move. That's also a Daiwa uh, bait junkie motor or grub. I uh, used these and caught a lot of fish on them. They're pretty much very, very similar uh, texture, stretch, durability, float, like the Z-Man Slim Swim, but I believe they've got a built-in uh, scent and attractant, which is actually in with the moulded plastic. So it's not a coating, it's actually in with the plastic, but I still use the Procure scent as well. So that was the rigs that did most of the damage on this day. So jig heads, we were finding 120th to 116th, Jig heads work the best and hidden weight towards the end, just a different presentation. Um, I really love 120th, um, especially if, you know, if I'm fishing two meters or under, you get that really slow flutter uh, that just hangs in the brim space and they just cannot resist it. You know, it's just wafting down the weed edge or the drop off, uh, hopping along the bottom and you just get that really light flutter, enough weight to get that tail working but they just, it just entices the bite and that's what worked a lot uh, over the last three trips. Leaders, quality leaders, Sunline. This is the Brim Special, that's four pound. And this is two pound, I was actually fishing three pound. FC Rock, fluorocarbon, all my leaders are fluorocarbon. You, you can't beat it. Plastics that work. So, so these are my go-to, Z-Man Grub, two and a half inch in motor or color. Amazing plastics, durable, you can put one on, use a little bit of super glue to, to glue to the jig head and you can fish with that plastic all day if you don't get tailored off. There's the bait junkie, that's a new packet. I think I went through almost a packet the other day and very similar to the Z-Man in texture and flotation. So they pretty much worked exactly the same. And just another profile, which is that Z-Man Slim Swim which is a paddle tail, two and a half inch soft plastic in motor oil again. I also caught fish. All right, so where do we target? So it's, it's not, every trip's pretty much different to the next time I go. We've had a good few days, rough, roughly fishing the same, but with minor changes. So the last time I fished this system before lockdown was about eight weeks ago, and we had a lot of rain, uh, the, the estuary filled up a lot with rain and muddy water and we found that down by the entrance and the channel markers down by the main boat ramp at Lake Tyres was where we were getting fish on those weed edges again um, but this is probably due to the fast flow in the in the arms and pushing a whole lot of food down that way so they, you know they just follow the food maybe they got a sense of the estuary is going to open up the entrance is going to open up as well. With this trip, uh, we'd gone, so two months had passed and from then the water temperature up five degrees because we'd had a really nice start to spring. A uh, really nice September where we got a few mid 20 days and high 20 days. So it's really pushed the water temperature up about five degrees from winter. So it was 10 degrees in winter, I think we're fishing 15, 16, 17 degrees by the end of the day. With that, I believe it's pushed a lot of brim up higher in the system. Generally, we found them around the two metre mark. So everywhere we went from mid now arm up was brim. All around the edges, two metres, little bays, find that two metres, 1.7 to two metre mark. And we were sounding up fish. Now, some of the schools weren't feeding that well. So we gave them 10, 15 minutes and then we moved on. So what you've got to do is really have a good look around. The first time we went, we started at the entrance, sanded up, had a little fish, didn't get anything, moved a bit further up, sanded around, couldn't sand any fish or bait fish. Bait fish is key as well. Moved halfway up past Devil's Hole, sanded a few fish, sanded a bit of bait. I caught one brim. Uh, we didn't see that as good enough, so we kept moving up and then we eventually found it a really nice school of fish and we ended up catching about 40 fish in about four hours. So 
that was really good. So from there, the first trip was like an investigation and a bit of an explore, spending a lot of time uh, figuring out what had happened and what changes had happened. And then from there, the next two trips, we pretty much went boat round two areas, catching fish because we put the effort in the time before. So there's no set rules. Everyone, um, a lot of people want spots and locations. It, it changes every time. You've just got to be ready to adapt, ready to, ready to move, ready to put the time in to find the fish. And then once you find them, figure out how you're going to catch them. So not taking one plastic, put a vibe on. Not taking vibes, put a different color plastic, different profile plastic. Find your gear up, go down in line, go down in hook size. Try and figure it all out. So that's pretty much it. In this video, you'll see I've gone through a little bit more on the technique and what we're doing and the sounder, uh, what broom looked like on the sander, things like that as we're moving along and little bits of weed on the bottom. Um, hit me up with any questions. I'll answer them the best I can. As I say, all, most of my videos, I'm no professional. I'm just a amateur bloke that spends a lot of time on the water and I think that's key. You spend a lot of time, you're gonna figure stuff out and catch some fish. So, hope you enjoyed the video. I hope it helps you out. Hit me up with some comments, hit the like, hit the subscribe, all that helps the channel. And let me know if you want me to monetize this channel and start putting adverts on. I don't, <laughs> I don't really don't like it, but obviously it gives the channel a bit of money. You can do some more things, so buy more equipment, things like that. Anyway, thanks for watching. Hope you enjoy and enjoy the footage and I hope you get something from it. Tight line. Oh, look at that, perfect, perfect timing. Full moon and a fish jumping out the water. So this is part two of the video. It's uh, Pistol's how to uh, catch brim video. So Pistol's gonna show you today. We're gonna be more professional, aren't we, Pistol? Yes, we are. <laughs> <laughs> well, look, we've, we've left the boat ramp and there's fish under us. There you go. There you go. So we're gonna go through a bit of that with you when we get to our area and find some fish. Go, go through the sander what we're seeing on the sander, how we're picking the areas we're going to fish and then what we're doing with our grubs. Now the breath of wind is meant to be 16 degrees, partly cloudy, the wind's actually meant to be dropping so if it's dropping from nothing it's going to be a good day. All right see you when we get to the first spot and I'll let you know what we are doing. See you soon. Exact spot though. It's the parting of the seas. Folks, quick update, now we can actually see. Um, what time is it, Pistel? It is. 6.40. So 6.40, we've got a dozen broom in the well. <laughs> uh, a couple around the 42, and a couple in the high, high 30s, and a couple of mid 30s, so. Um, we fished, what, an hour? Yeah. Reckon? About an hour, we got a dozen fish and lost a few more, so. I think it's safe to say that these methods and techniques are working so um, before we move we're going to let these fish go and then we're going to move further over and give these ones a rest time before we fished mid winter and we caught a lot of fish down the front right at the very front fish them this was due to colder water temperature and there was a lot of flow from the river um, so all the food all the current was being washed out to the entrance and it was filling up a lot of sand flats that were exposed we're getting covered so all the brim were down the front now that we're into we've done the first month of spring um, the water temperatures warmed up from winter by five degrees already um, we've had a little bit less rain there's still a bit of color on the water but as soon as it starts to warm up uh, and there's a bit less flow the brim moved back up the arms um, and occupy little bays, drop-offs. We're finding them everywhere, like literally everywhere we've been today, there's fish. Um, you've just got to put the time in, use your sander, and spend a lot of time. Like the first day that we came back after two months off, um, 
we started at the entrance, didn't get anything, moved halfway, saw a few fish, didn't get, ah, oh, caught one fish, and then we moved up here, and we started to catch heap of fish. So, time on the water, use your equipment, uh, don't rush it, spend your time sanding around, find your points of interest, like, even though we're in a bay, there's a whole lot of weed. So halfway across that bay there, there's a whole weed bed. So find the edge, find the drop off, target the points. See the fish on the sander like I'll show you now. And work those points of interest. So the ideal sanding speed is four to five kilometers. So at the moment, um, there's bait. That's a big bait ball, so a lot of bait fish. Deeper. Yeah, you can see that weed that you're picking up. This little bit of trim stuff here on the bottom is weed on here. That's a bit of weed and those individual dots and yellow markings is, is brim. So that's brim, that's brim. And all these dots off the bottom, they're all brim. Show it on the big screen. So every dot that's above that thick line and the weed you can see the little strands of weed there right on the bottom that's all brim here you go you've got one two three four five six six brim coming in there it's not zoomed in and on the normal sonar you can see them hugging hugging the bottom all those thick yellow blobs that's all brim all brim have another go here if you want pistol it's thick with them no good driving over them to try and find them, is it? No. Uh, it's Spot lock here. Another. We'll have another go. So, we are approaching a 1.7 metre drop off to 2 metres. 2.2 metres. Loads of fish. If anyone's, anybody wants to know what brim looked like on a sander, bottom left, normal sonar, bottom right. Clear view or Dan scan, and the top is a side scan. All those shadows on highlights are brim. Every bit of that is brim. Oh, look at them pistol. I'd see the line in it. There we go. That's a good bite. Good fish. That's a brim too. That's where we just came over and there's yeah. dozens of them. That was a good bite. Mm -hmm. Yeah. That's brim I reckon. Well, they stop fighting there, but I think he's brim. What's that, mate? Interrupted my fishing plans, yeah. Oh, nice one. That's a lovely fish. <laughs> Pretty good start, eh, pistol? Nice start to the day, bud. <laughs> 40? 39? It's going to be a 40, that one. Got to be, isn't it? Oh, got to be. Look at the weight of him. Look at that, Munro's. Gone. Got two pairs, there's another pair in the bag. Oh, I got some. Yep. Now he's on again. Ooh. There we go. Alright, I'll measure this later. Can you watch your foot? <laughs> Crystal. It'd be nice if they're all 40s, man. Right? Oh, bloody oath. <laughs> Could have had five fish already. <laughs> He's wrapped up, isn't he? You right? My heart's going there. <laughs> Another good fish. Yeah, 
year, baby. Oh, the other one, yes. Another high. That would be like 37 or something, wouldn't it? It's falling away. What broke? Huh? What broke? No, I hit the um, hit the Minkota remote. Small one. Chuck over here, see what goes. Yeah, I love that bit over there, where where it goes weed and then just drops off that weed. They're just sitting there. Yeah. There we go, fish on. One little wiggle, bang! Good bite. Couldn't see it, but felt it. It was all right. Get this in one more for a bag pistol <laughs> before sunrise. Yep. There we go. There's the bag. <laughs> oh, Ooh. oh, you're joking, pistol. No, oh, if that's a brim, this could be a Valentino. Go easy on him. Might be a brim of this <laughs> dogfish or something. <laughs> dogfish? Yeah. How's that? Oh. Mine's a decent one. I've got your end pistol. Ooh, that's a brim, mate. That's a nice one. Mine's a good one. Yeah. Oh, yes. Oh, oh that's right, right. Same as mine, isn't he? Okay. Smaller. How good's that? Double hook up. Sun hasn't even rose yet. And we got our bag. And we got our bag. Boom. <laughs> <laughs> Full moon, what was it? <laughs> Look at that. They're almost a pigeon pair, aren't they? Look at them. It was might have the it was might have it, the honors slightly. One sixteenth did you get? Well, that's what I'm getting hit on, 120th. I've felt it every single one of mine. There's definitely a lot more flow there than last time. Yeah. That's on the slim swim. Ball pan line. Seven in the well pistol before the sun's come up. <laughs> How good's fishing? Cast it out as far as you can. Give it a wind just to take up the slack on the cast. Watch that line. A bit hard at the moment just due to the light. Can't even see it really. And it goes slack. A little hop. So we're hopping and winding at the same time. So as you hop, taking in the slack of the reel and then watch that line as it sinks back to the bottom. And just keep repeating it all the way back to the boat.
Another bite on the drop. Watch pistol do his magic. See his line a bit better. That's another bite. When you have a bite, just let it sink back to the bottom. It's a little wiggle, making it look like a wounded bait fish. Wiggle, wiggle, wiggle. Clunk, <laughs> absolute clunk. Right there. Whack. No messing about with it. Oh, he's got he's got some weight. That's on the slimmy, so it's, they don't care, do they? They just take. I think slim swim's good because you got a lot of a lot of body there. You know? They glow really well. UV. This might be a flathead. Oh, that's a brim. Yep. Oh, double, double forties, baby. How good. <laughs> <laughs> Donkeys. Excuse me, sir. Oh, sorry. This is the second double hookup. Oh, sure, I got me other line here. Yeah. Is that me other line? No, exactly. it's gone. So right, it's gone. Oh, it's a nice fish. That is a nice fish. That is a ripping fish. He's fatty. Look at the size of that. He's fatty. He's only 40. No, no, he's bigger than 40. He's a 42. He wasn't here as well. No, don't worry about this. He's like a poor excuse. I'd get yours out there quick before he <laughs> eats it. <laughs> ah, funny boy. Come on, Hollywood. Let's have a measure of that thing. Oh, you got Hollywood. You got to have a Hollywood name for a Hollywood oh, fish, mate. Shit. Forty-two pistol. Got to tell you, sunshine. <laughs> oh, make it eleven. <laughs> oh, I didn't even hit the bottom. Bloody old pistol. Let's go again. Biggin. Three-pound line. I hope it's not a uh, two-foot flathead. That was a fire, heck, didn't it? Bang! I don't think it's a brim. Here it is. It must have come off the bottom. Brim or mullet? Oh, it's shaking like a brim. Yeah, a little brim. Little one. <laughs> you know, I reckon they're in that food chain, they're in that flow. I've just got three, two of the biggest ones from over here. <laughs> Sorry, Fizzle. Well, that to the shy ground, yeah. Yeah. Look at all the bait coming under the boat. That's why they're here. Bait. Yeah. He's alright, mid 30s, 36. <laughs> right on the edge of that drop off. Right there. Bait junkie, mate. Bait junkie. Oh, here we go. <laughs> it's working. <laughs> oh yeah. <laughs> right, right on the edge, about six foot eight. Six foot eight. You will. You get one. That's it. No, too far. <laughs> Come on, pistol. Don't get like that. <laughs> oh, far out. He's putting up a scrap. Yeah, boy. <laughs> Look at him, pistol. Look at him. 
I'll get a picture with this one. Oh my god, feel the weight of that. <laughs> Good lord. Oh, easy tiger. You've done all your fighting. It's got to be another 42, surely. Yep, 42. That's the bag. A bag of 41s, 42s, 43s. Just upgrade. Peeling line on the light gear. Amazing. Amazing. Alright, so the wind's picked up. We found a little corner with a few fish. We've caught a couple and bumped a couple and pistols on another one. So we'll uh, give you an update on what's happened and what we've done. And, um, it's a good one. Oh, that's a stonker. Boom. That's what it's all about. 40 centimeter brute pistol. Nice work. Show it off. Show your price. Nice. Got to be close to 40 if it's not 40. Zoom in. Slim swim on a hidden weight system. So we're gonna empty them now and then we're gonna weigh the biggest five in this bag. <laughs> it's hard to tell. So I'll whack them all in there and then we'll just let, let go of the. Uh, I'll get a picture of them all in there. Here's a decent one. I think there's a couple of these are deals. Here's the one. <laughs> Who's that 42, I think? We get a couple with the biggest ones photos. Here's, a, here's another good one. It's a little one. It's a, it's a smaller one. Good one. Right. Look at all them. The sun's just come up over the trees. It is quarter past seven in the morning. We've got a whole bag of brew. Oh, how many is that? The last one. You're kidding. There you go, quarter past, ten past seven. There you go, six. Healthy as.